Welcome to the Atlanta Braves offseason. The last episode you saw was the Game 6 against the Los Angeles Dodgers in the NLCS, where we lost that game. Dodgers move on to the World Series. They ended up playing the Cleveland Indians, who repeated as World Series champions. So back-to-back -back World Series wins for the Cleveland Indians. Edwin Encarnacion was the World Series MVP. The AL Playoff MVP was Francisco Lindor. And the NL MVP was Devin Mezzarocco of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now moving on to the offseason, as far as retirements go, I... I wish that I could say this was a surprise that this happened, but it's not because this game is so dumb. There's so many broken things about this game that they continue to ignore. Issues that have been in the game since I don't even know when, for years now, and they just completely ignore it every year. Bob Klein, 20 years old, he was 19 during the season, turned 20 once it hits the offseason, and he retires. C potential, 71 overall. He was a guy who was going to be like a shitty feeling shortstop with ridiculous contact. I did a prospect profile on him. I switched him over to first base. Was probably just going to be like a bench player or like maybe if I ever decided to move Freeman to third or something, Klein could have played first. But still, the guy was a decent enough player to where he shouldn't be retiring at 20 years old because you signed him couple months into the season it's just it's stop mlb you're so goddamn dumb fix this shit and now taking a look at the re-signings as far as this goes if there's somebody who i don't go over you're like well what about this guy if as, if i didn't mention in the video or i didn't show it in the video i just assume that i re-signed him because there are guys that like, I'm not going to go and show through every single being like, why well, offer this guy $80,000 and this guy $80,000? we would be here for weeks going over that shit. So, George Contos, one year, $2.8 million. He's back in the bullpen. Aaron Blair, two years, $6.3 million. He's going to be in a rotation this season. Eric Stametz, Stametz, whatever his name is. He was a uh, second baseman slash shortstop, I think also a third baseman in AAA for us last season. Uh, he did a decent job. He was an all-star when I signed him onto the team to be like a depth guy. Last year was his first year in organization. He played pretty well yet again, so we brought him back, considering we're probably going to need some backup infielders uh, because I don't really have a clear-cut backup infielder right now with Albies moving up to be the starter. Wilfredo Tovar also brought back for the same reason. One year, 500000 for him. Julio Tehran was the big re-signing. Four years, $60 million. He is going to be our ace for multiple seasons to come. It was a no-brainer to re-sign him. And as far as guys we let go, it's just the guys that I've been saying it for months now. If you guys aren't aware of players who I've been saying that we're going to go younger, we're not re-signing these certain players, you guys are just blatantly ignoring it, and it's all on you if you don't know this by now. Chris Davis, Marwin Gonzalez... Uh, Jeremy Hellickson, Jaime Garcia, all those guys, they're gone. No longer on the team. There's two open spots in the corner outfielders. Albies is another second baseman. We have new starting pitchers. We'll go over that a bit later, but those guys, gone. Did not bring them back. I've been saying that for months now. And I've also been saying for quite a while that when we get to the free agency portion of this offseason that I'm not really going to be offering anybody, and I really didn't offer anybody. And I did say that if there was one thing that I did want to beef up this season, it would be the bullpen. But there was nobody to beef up with. There's just no good relievers in free agency. The best relievers that were there were Sergio Romo, who had like a 7 ERA in the previous season, and Luis Avalon, or however you say his name, he's some lefty, he's also old, also had like a 5 plus ERA. Not interested, no thank you. We have enough mid-70s relievers to fill those roles. And one thing I did find quite hilarious in free agency is once you get to the portion where people, more people get added to free agency because if teams don't offer them arbitration, they get added to the free agent pool. And one guy who was not even offered arbitration was Chris Carter. The Yankees did not give him arbitration. He won the MVP in the 2018 season. 2019, they didn't like what they saw, so they did not offer him arbitration. And Chris Carter, he's in free agency. I didn't offer him because I have no room for him. I'm not going to, what do you want me to do with Chris Carter? Put him in left field? No, thank you. So Chris Carter wins the MVP, then has a bad season, no longer on a team. Probably got picked up by somebody, not me, I don't know who. We're taking a look at the big name signings throughout the league. There was 
Of course, the Dodgers signed another 90-plus overall player in Jose Altuve because Justin Turner was on a he was on the last year of his deal. They did not bring him back. We'll get on to where he went later on. But Jose Altuve is now going to be their everyday second baseman. Manny Machado is their everyday third baseman. Corey Seager's at shortstop. Cody Bellinger's at first base. Devin Marzarocco's behind the plate. They've got Yasiel Puig. They've got Jacques Peterson. And they've got Michael Brantley. How are you supposed to compete with that in the National League? Uh, Starling Marte, he's going to the San Francisco Giants. Felix Hernandez went to the Detroit Tigers. Xander Bogarts heading to our division in the NL East, going to the Washington Nationals. So I would assume that Trey Turner is going to now be playing second base for the Nationals. Uh, Michael Waka went to the Colorado Rockies to beef up their rotation. And he not only went there, but they also got Garrett Cole from the Pittsburgh Pirates, or they signed him because he was no longer a Pittsburgh Pirates. So Waka and Cole to the Rockies. But they did lose Nolan Arenado to the Toronto Blue Jays, so I cannot wait for the Toronto Blue Jays to either just not play one of Donaldson or Arenado, or to platoon them, even though they're same-handedness. So, I don't know. This game's dumb. They went and signed Arenado, even though they had Josh Donaldson, so one of them can just sit on the bench because MLB the show... Corey Dickerson also went to the Washington Nationals. He is going to be their left fielder now, heading into our division. Uh, Justin Turner, he's heading to the American League, to the Baltimore Orioles. I believe he was a Baltimore Oriole early in his career, if I'm not mistaken. And now he's heading back there. Uh, Todd Frazier, my man Todd Frazier, the Todd father, the king of Tom's River, New Jersey. He went to the Texas Rangers on a two-year deal, I believe. And now I shouldn't say that in free agency we made no signings because we did. Every offseason there's always guys who other teams don't sign because they draft them or they just don't uh, give them arbitration even though they're good prospects. I sign them, I put them in my system, we end up doing prospect profiles on them because they're good prospects. I signed quite a few of those type of players so you'll be seeing prospect profiles on them. I'm not going to show you them right now because that would defeat the purpose of the prospect profile. But there are quite a few of those guys that I signed. But the one guy who I am going to tell you who I did sign is not a prospect. He is going to be like our third catcher. He's the guy who, if somebody's struggling at catcher, this guy is going to be the one to get called up probably unless something else happens or I sign somebody else throughout the season. I don't know. It could all change. Somebody could get hot in the minors. But as of right now, this guy is our third catcher. It is AJ Jimenez. He's a decent bat. He's great defensively. I signed him to a one-year $670,000 uh, deal. I was also thinking about offering a contract to Jared Salt Lamakia, but he did not want the money I was offering him, and the St. Louis Cardinals gave him $4 million to go be their starting catcher, even though he hasn't hit over 200 in the past, like, four seasons of this franchise. So... You do you, Cardinals. You give him $4 million. I'll just take AJ Jimenez on a less than $1 million deal to be our third catcher. So that pretty much does it for the offseason video. Nothing really happened for us. I didn't really sign anybody. Going out and making a huge splash in free agency isn't my style to begin with anyways. But I even made it clear that I'm not going to be doing anything this offseason because we're going younger with the guys that we have. We've had guys ready to take over at certain positions for multiple seasons now. And this is what we've been building for to have a young core to build for the future. This is what we have now. They're able to take over. And we're set up to where, like, once Gong leaves, we'll have Kevin Maton ready. And even if he's not ready, we'll have somebody else ready. And it's just all kinds of stuff is set up right now. So it's, it's looking pretty good for the future. Once these guys develop into, like, every, well, they, they pretty much already are everyday Major League players. We'll probably have, like, I wouldn't be surprised to say if we make the wild card, but I'm not going to expect us to go win, like, 120 games and compete with the Dodgers for the World Series. Or for a spot in the World Series, I would say, because if I don't clarify that, people are going to be like, the Dodgers and the Braves can't play in the World Series jersey. What an idiot. But as far as what a quick little rundown of what our rosters look like as you see the, the scrolling through the positions, one to five starting rotations, probably going to look like Julio Tehran, Patrick Corbin, Mike Fultonevich, Aaron Blair, and Petey Payton. And then the catching, uh, the positions, catcher is John Ryan Murphy probably, first or definitely backup will be Gordon Miller, third will be AJ Jimenez, first base Freddie Freeman, second base Ozzy Albies, third base Jung Ho Gong, Shortstop, Dansby Swanson. Left field, Leon Fenn, who was last year's or like two years ago's first round pick. Center fielder was Ender Inciarte. And then right field is James Cornelius. 
So with that being said, it's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Atlanta Braves franchise. I've been your host, Jersey Born, and I'm saying goodbye. We the best. We will cut a fronty face in your chest, little wench. I'm unmentionably fresh. I'm a mitch. Get correct. I will walk into a court while they wreck, screaming, yes, I am guilty, motherfuckers. I am death. Hey, you want to hear a good joke? Nobody speak. Nobody get choked.